In February of 1968, um, I was around 12 or 13 years old, and I am from the city of Orangeburg, South Carolina, where we have the Orangeburg Massacre. It was on national news across the nation. Uh, my brother was involved in that. He was a student at South Carolina State University, then South Carolina State College. Uh, he was in his sophomore year. And the students there were protesting quite a bit in reference to going to the local bowling alley to bowl, even though there was a bowling alley on campus, they felt they could bowl in the local town, bowling center. And they went down and they were turned away and said that there was a league bowling at the time and it was not. And they came back on campus and there were meetings between both campuses, South Carolina State and uh, Clapham University with um, local leaders and church ministers. Um, the day of the massacre, or the night of the massacre, the students had a bonfire on the front of the campus. And from what I've been told and what I've read, the crackling from the wood burning um, was thought to be gunshot. And at that time, um, the city was on lockdown because of the unrest and the National Guard and local and state uh, police was on and surrounded the campus. So during the bonfire, again, the crackling sound let, made the um, officers thought that someone was firing a gun. And at that particular time, when they heard the sound, they began to fire into the crowd of the students. 29 students were shot. Four, three students lost their lives, uh, two college students and one young man from high school. Within the students of the 29, my brother was shot in the buttocks and the leg. For the most part, all the students were shot in the back or the back sides from running from the gunfire. Um, the devastation was great for our family and other families. Um, um, officers and people met after the fact, but nothing was ever resolved from the Orangeburg Massacre. Most of the parents end up sending their children out of state for, um, to finish their college. My brother ended up going to North Carolina A&T, and he currently resides in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, it took him about 25 years before he would tell or share anything about the story. Uh, South Carolina State has been doing a memorial every February um, in the last couple of years and he's been able to come back. And the first year that I attend the memorial with him, a lot of the men were there and there were some women involved as well. These were grown men and they were crying like babies because they had not unleashed that agony that they really could have been dead and uh, nothing was done by the state in reference to that. And um, it was just a devastating time for, for us, for my family, um, for my brother as well, and, um, and the unrest of, of the city. I, again, I was picked up that day and did not know why um, because of the massacre. But um, when you think about um, the evils of the world, I think a lot of things can be re resolved if people have time to have conversations and share because I don't think any parent at any university in anywhere in the world would want to hear the news that my child has been shot when I sent them to a safe haven to go to college. Beyond that, in some of the conversations I've had with my brother, on the night when some of them were taken on to the local hospital, of course segregation was still there. The local hospital, they were placed in the basement and a lot of them were upside the walls and on the floors and he watched two of his classmates died with no attendance. I can say because of the massacre and because of my brother and his family's disposition, um, I've always been close to him because I'm right behind him as far as a sibling, it was six of us. Um, I can say we have an open heart in reference to understanding why people do the things they do. And I think sometimes because of color or nationality or upbringing, um, some people have a tendency to um, look at these things as separation, and it's really not. Because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. Yes, we have differences, but I strongly believe that we have more similarities than we have differences. And um, even when you don't see eye to eye on the situation, you can always have discussion, and it never has to turn to violence. And I think during the civil rights time in, 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 the, early, in the late 60s, that was a, a booming thing for no discussion, let's have action as opposed to being proactive and react to things differently.